This is the new Orbea of Cofidis rider Geoffrey Soup. Now, it's so new, it doesn't actually officially have a name yet, but looking at it, it looks suspiciously like it might be the evolution of the Orca line. And even beneath that paint job, it is an absolutely stunning bike. Orbea haven't confirmed any details yet, but there are one or two things that we can work out from it. So, firstly, it is not an out and out aero bike. I think that's fairly clear to see, but those front forks look pretty reminiscent of the Ordu fork, so that's Orbea's time trial bike. And so, that's quite a clever move because obviously that's one of the main things that affects the aerodynamics, the front fork. So stick an aero fork on it and you're going to improve the performance of the whole bike. Now moving further back, some of the tube profiles are significantly different from the previous version of the Orca. And then we can see there's an integrated seat clamp back there. So that is a really nice touch. One of two bikes moving to that look now. And it is very, very smooth. Shame the uh, number holder kind of ruins the aesthetics, but clearly the number holder serves a purpose. Now elsewhere, one thing that's really struck me, in between those really slender looking seat stays there, there is a huge amount of tyre clearance. Now we're talking, you could probably get like a 30 up there. That's a big old tyre. Not quite so much at the front, probably stuck with a 28. You maybe squeeze a 30 in. So it's slightly aero. One can only assume about the weight. It feels pretty light. We'll try and stick it on the scales later. But with 30C tyres on it, that could be a really versatile looking bike. One of the things that sets Cofidis team bikes apart, and I mean the normal ones as well as this prototype one, is the amount of FSA components on here. So we have Shimano Di2 derailers and shifters, but then everything else pretty much is FSA. So we've got the K-Force light cranks on there, and we've got the FSA SLK brakes as well. Whilst we're with drive chains, just for a sec, there is an ingenious little contraption down here. So it is a chain catcher, but then on the chain catcher, they've got the sensor for the power meter as well. That's brilliant. That's gotta be up there for hack of the week. Hack of the tour, maybe. Now on the rear mech, you'll notice these really rather nice looking red jockey wheels. These are cycling ceramic jockey wheels. And so potentially, they're gonna be saving one or two watts, which could be significant. Don't snigger, seriously. One or two watts here or there, that adds up to a pretty significant gain, potentially. Vision are supplying the wheels. You can see here that Jeffrey is currently running the Metron 55s. I'm sure they'll be swapped out for the 40s for the climbing stages. They're the tubular versions, of course. Thank you very much. He's also running Kenda SC tyres on there. And these are relatively plump looking 25. Now another nice touch from the Coffee's mechanics is they look like they've changed the skewers from standard Vision ones to something that is incredibly slender and presumably super light as well. Now, as well as supplying much of the drivetrain, FSA also supply the bar, the stem, and the seat post. So we've got the K-Force light seat post and bars, the OS99 stem, that's 120 mil long. And the bars, they're officially 420 millimeters wide, but FSA always come up ever so slightly narrower, I find. So that is more like a 400 mil bar. And then the saddle is a Prologo NAS, and that's the one with the cutout channel down the middle. It looks particularly comfortable. Then moving back up to the bars, Prologo also supply the bar tape with that really quite cool looking black and white finish on the end there. I do like that. And then, of course, given that he's running an SRM, also got an SRM mount there, but no box currently on this bike. I guess he's maybe got that with him. We've got look titanium axle Keo blade pedals. And then on that FSA K4 slight chain set with the SRM, he's also running 3953 chain rings. And then Surprise, surprise, we don't have an 1128 cassette. No, we've got an 1125, which looks pleasingly old school. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to find out a little bit more information about this prototype or bear. And also, we've got to give fair play to the Cofflist Mechanics for choosing some really, really innovative components on this bike. Now, for more pro bikes on GCN, why not click just up there and you get through to our whole playlist? Or to see, lastly, having a good nose around the Cofflist Team Mechanics truck, click just down there. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.